Hey everybody, John Comp, Northwoods Whitetails Food Plot Seed Company. Tonight we're going to talk about switchgrass. I see a lot of questions on social media, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook. We're getting questions here at the shop daily on can I seed my switchgrass right now? And what I tell folks is the only reason you can seed right now is that it's ready to go. And what I mean by that is you have mowed and sprayed your area, um, let's say July, August, and September, August, September, October, it's been sprayed, the ground's prepped, or possibly maybe a cut bean field um, where the farmer got a good kill. But the area must be prepped ahead of time before you can frost seed switchgrass. If not, I think you're just wasting your time and your money. So this will kind of lead into this, uh, the second point. What is the best planning method? Drilling. So if we're going to have folks drill it, we like to see them mow. So let's say we're going to do a, an early, late spring, early, early summer drilling. Um, we would probably, we'll just use here in Upper Michigan, for example. So we would probably start mowing in early April. And I just, and it's, it's to get that new growth encouraged, the new weed growth. We want those weeds growing. And we want to get rid of last year's duff, all the dead thatch, the weeds and that. We try to get the ground cut as low as possible. That encourages growth. We'll do the first spraying of Simazine, Roundup and 2,4-D. We'll do a second spraying three to four weeks later of Roundup and 2,4-D. Our final spraying right at planting is going to be just Roundup. So we're not worrying about any residual from the 2,4-D. Now, if you don't have a drill and you've got consistent rain, which is hard to predict, but you've got consistent rain, um, you've got ground that holds moisture well, then you can probably go in and broadcast and roll that seed in without disturbing the ground. Now, if you're in the sandy ground, that is what our RC Tecumseh typically is grown in. Man, I really like to see it drilled. I really like to see that seed covered. So a drilling or a frost seeding, to, my, to me, for the RC Tecumseh works the best. Now, we have had some customers that have rolled it in uh, late May, early June with success, but I think that's just going to hinge on the region, the soil type. I mean, if it's just uh, you know up on a hill or a, a, a ridge and it just consistently is dry, I would highly recommend trying to find a drill and have it drilled. Frost seeding right now. What I would do, and I'm just going to use here in Upper Michigan for an example, we mow in early July, and again, we try to get rid of all the, the thatch, the duff. We don't want, like if you're using a brush cutter and you get that big thatch trail out the back, that's got to be eliminated. We take it right to the ground as low as we can, encourage that weedy growth. So that's early July. Late July, we're going to do a spraying of Simazine, Roundup, and 2,4-D. A month later, we're going to do Roundup and 2,4-D. And then a month later after that, probably mid to late September, straight roundup. Now, if you're in an area that you can get into without disturbing your hunting, maybe a fourth spring of roundup. We want it bare dead, just nothing growing going into uh, the winter. And then you can frost seed, um, you know, if, if we've got a dry December, um, we didn't have that this year, but we've had Decembers here where we went all the way almost to Christmas with all the snow on the ground you can probably drop that seed before the snow hits. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to wait till June. Um, June. You're going to have to wait till uh, February or March when the snow is melting to drop that seed. Those are the two methods we really like. Okay, And I know there's a dozen ways to plant switchgrass. But keep in mind, we've got a lot of people that have uh, never planted switchgrass before buying it from us. And I think these two methods are what we've done and we've seen the most success with the least amount of gamble. Now, um, when I say gamble, what I mean by that is Roundup. There's a lot of people advising you can use Roundup once the seed is down. And I've seen some people do that with success. However, after selling switchgrass for, I think this is our fifth year now, I've seen thousands and thousands of dollars of switchgrass killed because someone you know, took some advice, whether they saw it on YouTube or Facebook or their friend, or they had a co-op come in and spray. The seed had been germinated already and they killed it. 
What we're finding with the switchgrass, especially this RC line, and I actually, I actually asked Roger today this question, what is the lowest temperature you've seen this RC line of switchgrass germinate? And he said upper 40s, low 50s. Now, is that common? Is that going to be all the time? I, I don't think so. But that's, that's an interesting point. You know, so watching corn or that kind of stuff, that's got no bearing on this RC line of switchgrass. And I don't think Cave and Rock is too far behind that. So I actually had a gentleman call me last week. He had to order some more switchgrass because he had 20, I believe it was 20 acres of switchgrass planted last year. They frosted it all. Had the co-op come in and spray Roundup. And the co-op was two weeks behind. Killed the whole field. So not only did this gentleman lose financially, but now he's set back one more year on his plan. So can it be done? Yeah, you probably can do it. I know guys that have done it, sprayed around up over seeded ground. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. I wouldn't even do it on my own personal ground. I mean, if I had a little half acre plot out here, out here somewhere, I would not spray around up on, on seed that's, that's on the ground because it's, you're, you're just taking a gamble in my opinion. And I've just seen it too many times where people have killed their switchgrass stands. Now that doesn't mean you can't go spray Roundup and drill it the same day. You know, like this last spring, you can spray and drill the same day. Or if you're going to broadcast it, give it a day and then go broadcast. But to put the seed down like right now and then try to spray your way out of it, especially using Roundup, I just don't think that's the best approach. Now, uh, we work with Jake Blow out of Minnesota, great habitat manager. He's got two phenomenal videos on, on killing uh, foxtail and broadleaf and switchgrass. He uses quinclornac. If you get a foxtail problem, he's got a great video using quinclornac, his methods, the ratios. Uh, we're going to try to post that uh, in the comment section. But Jake's got some great uh, switchgrass planting videos on how to take care of the weeds. But Jake said the same thing. I wouldn't recommend glyphosate once that seed is down. Now, one of the things we tell folks, so let's say we do need to, we have to spray some 2,4-D. We do have to spray some quinclornac. And this is our switchgrass right here. Okay. We want to just do a small test area first. That's what I recommend. I do that on my own properties too. We're just going to do a small little spot. So let's say this is the very most important part of the switchgrasses up here. This could be a screen, whatever. We're just going to do a small test area. We want to see how the switchgrass reacts to whatever you're putting down, whether it's 2,4-D. Maybe you mixed it too hot. Uh, maybe you mixed the quinclornac too hot. Maybe that's not even quinclornac in that jug that you got from your buddy who got from his cousin who got from his neighbor. Okay, it's Roundup. And we want to make sure that if we're going to kill this stuff, we want to make sure we only damage a small area. So do a small test area. Anytime you're planting the two most important things, your screen, um, HD screen, switchgrass, just do a small test area. But like I said, Jake Blow's got some really good videos on spraying quinclornac and 2,4-D on switchgrass. Highly recommend watching that. But I just wanted to bring this up a little bit. We're seeing all this. This is what we recommend here at Northwoods Whitetails with our RC Big Rock, our RC Tecumseh, our Cave and Rock Switchgrass. We've got all three on the shelf right now in 50-pound bags and 5-pound bags. Uh, the Cave and Rock we got in, uh, we're to the point now where we're actually picking and choosing what part of the country this Cave and Rock comes in because we're finding some Cave and Rock actually does better growing in certain areas than it does in other parts of the country. And a lot of it's got to do with the drought. But anyway, we've got Cave and Rock and 5 and 50 pound bags on the shelf. We've got RC Big Rock, which I think is probably, boy, that's just an unbelievable uh, switchgrass from what we've seen so far. We've got that in 5 and 50 pound bags on the shelf. And then we've also got RC Tecumseh, which has done outstanding in the very dry region, sandy soil. Uh, we've got that in five and 50 pound bags as well. So just wanted to talk about switchgrass a little bit. A lot of folks asking questions. I hope this answered some questions for folks. Um, still working on that email for, uh, for customers to, uh, ask us questions for exclusively this channel. I didn't realize I had so many emails registered to me. We're trying to clean that all up and I'm not the most tech savvy guy in the world. So bear with me, but, uh, we got a lot of positive feedback about that idea and what we're going to do here. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this answered some questions. If you've got any questions, you can reach out to us, text message, private message, email, 
Um, I don't know, you can send a pigeon over. I don't know if it's going to get to us, but we'll try. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you in a few days.